تبسم 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 الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي عز فارتفع وذل كل شيء بعظمته فخضع وفرش العرض ووسع وفجر الأنهار فأنبع ونور نورا فشعشع وكلم موسى فأسمع وتجلى سبحانه للجبل فتقطع وأعطى ومنع وسن وشرع وصلاة وسلام الأكملان الأتمان على ركن الأعظم أفضل من تقدم ومن تأخر وعلى آله وأصحابه الغر الميمين فقد قال تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد وعلى الله فليتوكل المتوكلون وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لو أنكم تتوكلون على الله حق توكله لرزقكم كما يرزق الطير إلى آخر الحديث صدق الله المولان العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الأمين الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله يا رب يا رب العالمين My revered ulama, ikram, respected elders, beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, let me begin with the greeting words of paradise, the greeting words of solidarity, and allow me to say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Verily, all praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the most gracious, who is the most merciful, that through his infinity mercy and countless blessings that Allah Rabbul Izzah has bestowed upon us, he has once again gathered us on this auspicious day, the day of Yawm al Jum'ah. And let me continue to say that fortunate are those who found the day and blessed are those who will attain as much reward as possible on this auspicious day. And amongst the ethics of Yawm al Jum'ah, the Holy Prophet is reported to have said that verily this is the best amongst your days. فَأَكْثِرُوا مِنْ صَلَاتِكُمْ Read as much durood and salutations as you can. Why? فَإِنَّ صَلَاتَكُمْ مَعْرُوضَةٌ عَلَيَّ Because your salutations, your durood is presented to he, صلى الله عليه وسلم. And as to what follows, the topic of discussion is trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verily, if we are to pause for a moment and we look at the world today, you can simply see that we are living within fears. There is different fears that are going through our minds. It might be job security. One might be worried that how long will I last with this job? There is fear of loss. Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you so much in life. And you just fear that maybe one day I will lose everything that I have. And many a times if you are to look at the world, it could be economically, it could be socially. You can see that people are going through all of these fears. But what is the bottom line of fear and what causes fear? A question arises here. You can simply see that fear is lack of faith. Fear is lack of faith. When one's faith is weak, automatically he lives with fear. If you are to turn to our scriptures, the Holy Quran, there is a very interesting ayah. I hear many people many a times they say that Hasbun Allahu wa ni'am al wakil. Look at the beginning of this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention and he says that Alladina qala lahumun nas, those who believe, who were told by other people that inna nasa qadi jama'u lakum, that verily be careful. People have gathered, people have surrounded themselves. And they have sit down to discuss about you. They want to fight you. They want to kill you. I mean, imagine if you hear that the board of directors are sitting down in the office. And they are discussing about your life, your way forward in the company. Maybe you might face elimination. What goes through your mind? You will go through depression. You will go through worries. But what was the response of those who believe? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when they were addressed in regards to fear, what happened? Fazadahum imana. Their iman increased. Their iman increased. So this should be the quality of a believer. That whenever you are exhorted to fear, your iman should increase. If you are to look at the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of many a times. Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of faith, it is coupled with trust. 
in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is known to be a tawakkul. When you know that there is no one out there who can help you in life except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One student was making dua in front of his teacher. He made this dua that, Ya Allah, may the hearts of people incline towards me. The teacher said, no, don't make such a dua. He said, whenever you make dua, make such a dua that, Ya Allah, may the people hate me so that I can only find refuge in you only. May the people hate me so that I can find refuge in you only. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, who else and what else matters in life? Look at this lady, I always make mention of her. She says that, وَيَا لَيْتُكَ تَحْلُوا وَالْحَيَاتُ مَرِيرَةٌ She said, Ya Allah, as long as you are pleased, let life be bitter. Let life be bitter. وَيَا لَيْتُكَ تَرْضَى وَالْأَنْعَامُ غَضْبَانًا Ya Allah, as long as you are happy, as long as you are happy, let people be angry with me. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure makes, means everything to you, then nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. She says, Ya laytuka, wa layta alladhi bayni wa baynika amiru. Ya Allah, let that which is between you and me stand forever. And that which is between me and creation get destroyed. You, you look into our lives. Where have we placed our hopes? Did we place our hopes on the Creator or we have given our hopes to creation? And whenever you place your hopes on creation or your trust on creation, you will surely be disappointed. But if you are going to put your trust in Allah Rabbul Izzah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sooner or later, He will provide you that which you need. وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ Whosoever will put his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Rabbul Izzah is enough for him. Allah Rabbul Izzah is enough for him. There is the story of the, mul- the Malik and the Wazir. One was a king and he had a vicegerent who was the deputy. So whenever anything happens, the deputy used to say that khairi insha'Allah. Through the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever has happened, then insha'Allah, this thing means good in the eyesight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So once the king, his hand got cut off. His hand got cut off. And when the wazir saw the situation, it's a sad situation. He said that khairi insha'Allah. There is good in it insha'Allah. When the king heard this, he got so angry. He got so much angry that he had to ask. He said, how can you speak like this when I am going through so much pain? Then he decided to send his wazir, his deputy, to, the, to, the, to prison. And when this was the scenario, when this was the case, the wazir went to prison. He lived in prison. But when he was sent to prison, he said the same words. He said, khairi insha'Allah. In whatever I am going to go through now, maybe insha'Allah by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is some good in it. So when the wazir went, the king decided to go on an expedition. He went to a jungle. As he was in this jungle, he didn't know that the inhabitants of this jungle, they were going through a ceremony. A ceremony whereby there were sacrifices that were supposed to be made. <coughs> and the sacrifice included killing one person so that they can give it to the spirits. So all of a sudden they caught the king and they brought the king in front of this big magician who was supposed to carry out the sacrifice. As they were about to kill this king, they looked at his hand. They said, no, we can't kill this man. Because whenever we kill someone for sacrifice, this person should be perfect. This person should be perfect. So the king was released. And what came to his mind was that the words of the wazir, what the wazir said, that in the cutting of this hand, there is good in it by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was surprised. He was so happy. He went back to the wazir. He went to the prison. He said, this is what happened to me. I went through this scenario and this were the results. But there is something that is worrying me. When I sent you to prison, you said khair insha'Allah. Khair insha'Allah. What did you mean? What good did you get out of it? 
The wazir said that, you know, I am your deputy. And wherever you go, I'm always with you. Wherever you go, I am always with you. So if I was going to go with you on this expedition, perhaps they were going to save you and they were going to kill me. So for this, I said, Khairi, inshallah. So this is the meaning of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever happens in your life, whatever challenges that you go through in life, indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is putting you in that challenge so that you can grow and you can become the better person that you are supposed to be. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if you put all your affairs in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide you. لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ تَتَوَكَّلُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ If you people are going to put your trust in Allah, not only trust, he said, حَقَّ تَوَكُّلِ Real trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely provide you just as he provides for the birds. What happens to the birds in the morning? They go out on an empty stomach. Then they come back home on a full stomach. That is the Iman that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was portraying to us. Ya Allah, as long as you are pleased with me, let the whole nation, let everyone be angry with me. Because your pleasure means everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the nourisher. He is the sustainer. So you need to make him the center of everything that you do. You know, once Hazrat Shibli, rahimahullah, he was sitting with his companions. They were writing notes. He was a sheikh. As they were writing these notes, a drunkard came by. And he said to Hazrat Shibli, look at these words. He said, you people, you are not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Rather, you are only worshipping the sustenance that you want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are worshipping the risk that you want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Hazrat Shibli heard these words, he told his students that write these words down. Write these words down. The drunkard was surprised. He said, why are you writing these words down? Hazrat Shibli said that whenever you see a pearl in a drain, in garbage, you have to take it, you have to wash it, cleanse it, nourish it and treasure it. When this person heard this, he said, are you going to take words of a drunk person? Hazrat Shibli said, yeah, I am going to do so. When this was the scenario, he said, your religion is a true religion. Your religion is a true religion. I am here to embrace Islam on your hand. I am here to embrace Islam on your hand. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened chapters in your life, listen to the words of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He used to say that, Ilahi ma'abattuka khawfan min narika wala jannatik. That, Ya Allah, I do not worship you because I desire to enter into Jannah. Neither am I afraid of the fire of Jahannam. But, Ya Allah, wajadtuka ahlan li ibadati fa'abattuk. But I came to realize that you are my Lord. You are my sustainer. You are my nourish. I put my trust in you. That is the only reason why I worship you. So many a times in life we go through all these challenges. Where should our trust be? Should it be upon the creation or should it be upon the creator? That is the million dollar question. That is the million dollar question. And whatever we go through in life, there are always trials. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that nasu an yutraku an yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun. Does man think that we will leave him to say that I believe in Allah without putting him into trials, without putting him into tribulations? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that wa ladina min qablikum. Indeed, we have tested those that were before you. And we came to realize those who stood upon the truth, those who strived, and those are the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give reward on the day of reckoning. So all these trials and tribulations that we are going through in life, all these challenges that we are going through in life, we need to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as I have said, the iman of those people that were before us, قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسِ Those who were told by people that إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ That verily people have gathered for your destruction. فَخْشَوْهُمْ 
Fear them. Fear them. When fear was instilled in them, فَزَادَهُمْ imana, Their iman increased. We make dua that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through every challenge that we go through, we grow and our iman increases. <laughs> وَقَالُوا But they said something. حَسْبُنَ Allah. Allah is sufficient for us. وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who takes care of everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who takes care of everything. And keep these words in mind. Whenever a person put his trust in other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is definitely going to find disappointment. But if you are going to put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah rabbal izzah will provide you sooner or later. Whenever you are to look at the life of the pious predecessors, Whenever they were about to leave this dunya, the message or the advice that they used to give their children was always fear Allah and put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At times they had nothing to leave them except these words. Except these words. So if you are going to give your children iman that is coupled with tawakkul, they will make it through in their life. But if you are going to give them dunya, that dunya will leave them just as you have left it. And they will always be disappointed. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inculcate these teachings of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us to be amongst those people that whenever they are faced with challenges, whenever trials and tribulations come their way, we always put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sum of substance of Iman. It is the total substance of Iman. When one has the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will surely leave this dunya with happiness and they will get distinctions in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this holy Quran so that we can ponder it, so that we can ponder over it. And Allah Rabbil Izzah wants us to have that Iman. He wants us to have that Iman that is coupled with trust in him. This lady that I was mentioning, his child, she says that, in Suha Minkal Wood, Fali Kulli Hayin. He says, Ya Allah, as long as your love is there, everything becomes so easy. Everything becomes so easy. Wal Kulu Fauka Turabin, Turabin. And whatever is on top of dust becomes dust. Whatever is on top of dust becomes dust. Nothing else matters in my life as long as I have you, Ya Allah. We make dua that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of us present here today. May Allah rabbal izzah to those who are feeling sick. May Allah rabbal izzah grant them east and shifa. Wallahu yaqulu al-haq wa huwa yahdi sabir. Wa ma alayna illa al-balahu al-mubin. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. تبسم تبسم وخل الهموم وخل الغموم وخل الضجاج